<laughs> hey there, folks. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, while this has to be the very worst year of our lives, the year 2020 is still the year of mice and rats. So as such, tonight, I'm taking you guys back to the American Tail franchise again, which to me is classic. Yep, we all know that the original 1986 movie is a Don Bluth classic, and the sequel, Bible Goes West, is one of my childhood favorites. Also, you may remember, about a couple months ago, I blogged the third movie, The Treasure of Manhattan Island, which had okay hand-drawn animation, and the story was pretty good, and it had some memorable songs, despite the villains being a tad racist. However, with Halloween almost here, let's look at Fievel's fourth and final movie, which happens to be a mystery movie. So, released to home video on July 25th, 2000, the movie is An American Tale 4, The Mystery of the Night Monster. Now, on to the plot of the movie. Manhattan's rodent population is being terrorized by a vicious night monster, and Fievel has been spending many sleepless nights worrying about his family's safety. In search of a little reassurance, Bible accompanies his sister Tanya to her job at the local newspaper. What he gets instead is an assignment to accompany the fearless reporter Nellie Bree as she delves deeper into the story. So, what do I personally think of this movie? Well, in my honest opinion, I think this sequel is pretty underrated, and it's also very thrilling. But to further explain why I enjoy the film, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Now, this marks the last role for Nehemiah Persov for voicing Papa Mouskowitz in a movie before he retired from acting in order to become a full-time painter. It is also the last time Don DeLuise voiced Tiger before his death in 2009. Now, what do I think about the animation? Well, to me, this style of hand-drawn animation is in the same style as the third movie, and while I don't really consider it bad per se, it just doesn't really top Don Bluth or Amblimation style from the first two American Tale movies. But on the positive side, I like the new locations featured in this, like Central Park, Chinatown, the Daily Nibbler, the sewers, and an old abandoned mansion. As for the story, well, to me, the story is pretty good, with it teaching us how to face our fears. Plus, while some parts of the movie are pretty dark, the main plot kind of feels reminiscent to Newsies. Also, I like that the film is basically a mystery movie. Now, let's talk about the titular Night Monster. In several scenes, we do see a few glimpses of what the beast could look like, like during Fievel's nightmares, and several mice around New York see it as something different, like a lake monster or a dragon, but in reality, the monster is actually a robotic contraption fitted with a ghastly flashing picture of a cat's face and a large buzzsaw. Now, in total, this movie has three songs. Our first song is Get the Facts, which is sung by Nellie Bree in order to encourage Fievel to overcome his fears by approaching them with logic and reasoning. To me, this would have to be my favorite song due to it sounding optimistic, kind of like Never Say Never from the first movie. Next is the villain song, 
Creature de la Nuit, sung by Madame Musset and her three hench cats, Twitch, Bootlick, and Slug. The song is basically about how great Madame Musset is, and that Nellie Bree should take her seriously. What I like about this song is how menacing it sounds, and I like the French tango rhythm. The last song in the film is called Who Will, which is sung by Nelly, Philo, Tony, and Tiger in order to convince the Grand Dog Council to help them in their search for Madame Ose while they're in Central Park. In my eyes, this song is okay, but it does sound pretty emotional. And now, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Bible Mouskowitz, is once again voiced by Thomas Decker, who also voiced Littlefoot in a few Land Before Time sequels, and he played Jesse in the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake. In this movie, Bible becomes ensnared in a mystery involving a supposed monster that is kidnapping mice. Compared to the past three movies, where he is courageous and adventurous, in this film, Bible battles his fears and suffers from nightmares due to the supposed monster. Also, Bible works as a sketch artist while supporting Nellie Bree. Oh, bonus fact. Thomas Decker received a Young Artist Award for Best Performance in a voiceover for Fievel, which is really impressive, by the way. Fievel's sister, Tanya, is again voiced by Lacey Chabert. Best known as Eliza Thornberry from the Wild Thornberry series. In this movie, Tanya works as a secretary at the Daily Nibbler, and she tries to act more mature and adult, partly because of her crush on editor Reed Daly. Next we come to Tony Taponi, again voiced by Maeve Whitman's mother, Pat Music, who voiced Elsa Frankentine in Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. In this movie, Tony works as a paper boy, but he wants to be a reporter for the Daily Nibbler. Tony helps Fievel and Nellie out on a few occasions, but is still, for the most part, a side character. It is stated that Tony did help Tanya get her job as Reed Daly's secretary. To me, Tony is still a memorable character, and in this movie, I like the scene where he stops the monster by dropping a chandelier on top of it, and when he rescues the mice by flooding the sewers. Also, I think Tony's job as a daily nibbler is a far better job than at the cheese factory. Next is Tiger, voiced by the late, great Dom DeLuise. To me, Tiger is still a great character in this franchise. In this film, Tiger assists Tony in his paperboy job, and later on, he plays an important role in getting the Dog Council in Central Park to capture Madame Musse, overcome his fear in the face of dogs. Our first new character is Nellie Bree, voiced by singer Susan Boyd, who also got to voice in the bizarre Rover Dangerfield movie. I really like Nellie, due to her being a mentor to Fievel, and I like her optimism. Plus, I like her mid-slash-transatlantic accent, which is pretty similar to legendary actress Catherine Hepburn. Next up is Reed Daly, voiced by Robert Hayes. 
who's best known from the airplane movies, the Homer Bound movies, the Nutcracker and the Mouse King, and the Cat's Eye. Now, Reed has been in the newspaper business for a very long time, ever since the U.S. Civil War. To me, Reed has a very dry-witted and sarcastic personality, and I think he's a tad weird that he would rather make up sensational stories in order to sell more newspapers than to tell the truth in his articles. But overall, Reed is still a likable character, and I think he and Nellie make a nice couple. This is the Dog High Council, which consists of the Great Dane, voiced by Jeff Bennett, and Lone Wolf, voiced by John Gary, and several other stray dogs. These guys live in Central Park. While not exactly allies of the mice of Manhattan, due to them not wanting to interfere in the affairs of other animals, they do end up coming to their aid in order to help defeat Madame Mousset. Next we come to Twitch, an evil cat voiced by John Mariano, who voiced Bobby Goodfeather from the Animaniacs. This bad kitty despises Madame Mousset, and he has been teasing her about her problems with the other dogs. To me, Twitch is a very short-tempered cat, and because he easily gets abused by Madame Mousset, Twitch tries to get the cats to turn on her because he believes they were better off without her, and since they have Mousset's sewer maps, they have a way to get past the mice gates that protect them from the cats. Finally, we come to the main villain, Madame Mousset, a miniature French poodle voiced by veteran voice actress Candy Milo. When we first see her, Mousset pretends to be a soothsayer in order to make money from the mice but it is later revealed that she's the one who created the Manhattan monster in order to get rid of the rodents. You see, when she ran away from her owner, the other dogs didn't want to be around a dog who looked similar to a rodent, nor did they want any part of her evil schemes. So she instead rounded up a group of stray cats to work for her. In my opinion, Mousset is kind of self-conscious and sensitive about her size, and she's also manipulative. And overall, she's a sick and twisted puppy, kind of similar to another poodle character. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, in American Tale 4, the Mystery of the Night Monster is not really a perfect movie, but I think it's the most underrated in the American Tale franchise. The animation is okay, but the story is thought-provoking, thrilling, and a little bit cliched, but still has a nice message about being brave. The songs are nice to listen to, plus Bible, Tanya, Tony, and Tiger are classical and memorable characters, and the new characters like Nellie Bree and Reed Daly are equally as likable. You may not like this movie as much as the past three movies, but if you have kids, I'm sure they'll enjoy it much more than you. I give this film an 80% out of 100. Well, folks, that's all for tonight. Be sure to join me in the other world for my final Halloween blog of 2020, Mustang Power.